Do you really know about the trials and tribulations behind the scenes of Linda Carter's portrayal of Wonder Woman in the 1970s? While her performance as the Amazonian princess is celebrated as a landmark in television history, empowering and iconic, the path was not always as smooth as it seemed on screen. Audiences around the world were mesmerized by her superheroic feats and distinctive costume, yet few were aware of the struggles and challenges associated with the very outfit that became synonymous with her character. I accept the challenge. In this video, we will delve into the lesser-known stories of Wonder Woman's costume conundrums, shedding light on the hidden battles that took place off-camera. Early Life Who is Linda Carter? Acting and Music Enigma Linda Jean Cordova Carter was welcomed as a new addition to the Colby and Juanita Carter family on July 24, 1951. Linda was born in Phoenix, Arizona in the United States. The Wonder Woman superstar has a rich cultural heritage. Her father was born of Irish-American descent and her mother had a blend of Mexican, Spanish, and French history. Linda, however, whom one would expect to be an amazing linguist, could only hear Spanish being spoken but couldn't say it. Linda Carter's father used to be an antiques dealer, while her mom, a Mexican immigrant, worked in the telephone industry. Linda has two other siblings, Vincent and Pamela. While Carter was a kid, one of the many things she enjoyed doing was reading comic books. Linda was a voracious reader and particularly bullish on the Wonder Woman comic books. She loved and followed it to detail. She was usually fascinated and extremely inspired by her superhero, Wonder Woman's Daring Adventures. This was the same for every girl alike during her early years as a kid. While Linda Carter wouldn't have imagined it in a life team that she would ever play the role of Wonder Woman. In a matter of years, she had mentally groomed herself for the role. This is why years later she was able to pour in all forms of professionalism into it and even help herself when her Wonder Woman outfit came falling down. Interested to know how it went down? Keep watching to find out. Linda Carter attended Globe High School and Arizona and Arcadia High School in Phoenix. As mentioned earlier, Linda enjoyed spending her time reading and then doing one other thing, music. Linda loved the sound of pleasant tunes, and not only that, she loved to create them, too. Because of her love for music, Linda joined a performance band during high school called Just Us. This band was a unique one. They had very simple instruments, but they made statements with them. The band's instruments were just a conga drum, a marimba, an acoustic guitar, and a stand-up bass guitar. At the age of 16, Linda left Just Us, to join another band, The Relatives, with two of her cousins and actor, Gary Berghoff, who was the band's drummer. The band of cousins had their maiden performance at the Sahara Hotel and Casino Lounge in Las Vegas. Their performance was short-lived. It only lasted three months. And one funny thing was underage Linda used to sneak in for performances through the kitchen. This only goes to show how much Linda loved music. In 1970, Linda started growing skin in the music game and decided to take her music career one step higher. Linda auditioned to become one of the singers of the Garfin Gathering. The audition was successful, and she got in to sing with the band leader, Howard Speedy Garfin. The Garfin Gathering Band and their new addition had their first performance at a hotel in San Francisco, the Holiday Inn. The hotel was a new one with no completed sidewalk entrance. The absence of a completed sidewalk entrance made proper performance a wish for the band, but they found their way to perform in the underground garage, mostly to the hotel staff and guests who parked their cars there. However, despite the setback, the Garfin Gathering faced at Holiday Inn, San Francisco, Linda enjoyed her moments with the band during their tours. The Garfin Gathering toured the Nevada Silver Circuit, having back-to-back -back shows in the state's casino lounges, shuttling Lake Tahoe, Carson City, Reno, and Las Vegas. 
It's worth knowing that Linda was shining her light in music while she was a kid and not even acting. And that begs the question of how she became Wonder Woman. Well, here's how she did it. The transition. The Superwoman Wonder Woman was every young lady's inspiration, not excluding Linda as well. But how did a fictitious comic character become real, and with Linda Carter even acting the role? Linda had her first television debut appearance at the age of five on Liu King's talent show. And then nothing happened until 1972. After Linda decided to leave the Garfin gathering, she pursued a career in the world of acting, prompting her return to the state of Arizona. Returning to Arizona seemed like a good decision for Linda, or better put, this was the best decision that changed the trajectory of her life in such a short time. In the same year, in 1972, Linda Carter contested and won the Arizona Beauty Contest and drove national attention to herself when she won the Miss World USA 1972, representing her state, Arizona. Carter was on her way to the top. In the International Miss World 1972 pageant, Linda reached the top 15. This was the first of the explosive growth and entry of Wonder Woman. After achieving these milestones, Linda Carter didn't marinate long enough and then before she started attending acting classes at different acting schools in New York. One of her acting partners was former CBS president Les Moonves. A few moments after spending time squeezing as much knowledge as possible to become a professional actor, Linda made her first acting appearance in the drama Roots of Anger, an episode of Nakia, a 1974 police drama classic. Soon after her appearance, she began to appear on TV shows such as Star Sky and Hutch, Koss and other movies classified as B-movies. Linda as Wonder Woman. The Wonder Woman classic started a comic series. After a few years, a move was made to flip the comic classic into a TV series. Although a great idea, it came with a lot of controversies and criticisms that it could be a death trap for the most enjoyed comical piece by young girls at the time. It was hard even for studio executives to believe turning it into a TV series would be a hit. They didn't know the only spice they needed to bring life to this idea was bringing in the Wonder Woman superhero actor, Linda Carter. Wonder Woman, a fictional superhero, was created by the American writer and psychologist William Moulton Marston and their artist counterpart, Harry G. Peter in 1941 for the comic production company, DC Comics. The Wonder Woman, or Diana Prince, her name for disguise character, was born during the rise of another comic superstar, Superman. DC creative designer, William Marston designed Wonder Woman as counter-programming to the Man of Steel, Superman. The Wonder Woman character is also described as the amazing Amazon, the spirit of truth, the Messira's champion, and the goddess of love and war. Wonder Woman became an instant hit and most popular favorite DC comic book with a female superhero. DC Comics wanted to take things a little bit higher than usual and turn the Wonder Woman comic classic into a TV series. This was Linda's opportunity for a big break in the movie industry. Did the opportunity come to life? And did Linda maximize this opportunity? Believe it when I say Linda found an opportunity of a lifetime, and she sucked the best out of it. Linda's serendipity in the entertainment industry took off when she landed the starring role in Wonder Woman in 1975, acting as the lead character and female superhero Wonder Woman and her covert identity as Diana Prince. Linda's opportunity to take up the role that brought her to the limelight came at the least expected time. Linda was going to return to Arizona after almost exhausting all of the savings that were needed to buy her time during the period of transition from singing to pursuing an acting career in Los Angeles. Ted publicly that on the day she got the Wonder Woman role, all she had left in her account was just $25. On the day Linda was to go back to Arizona, she received a call from her manager informing her that Joanna Cassidy had just lost the role of Wonder Woman, and she now had the part of Wonder Woman. Remember Linda made great use of any opportunities she got? 
She did the same with this new opportunity. Linda's performance as Wonder Woman was stellar, and this garnered her fans that felt cult-like, turning even critics into raving fans. The Wonder Woman series lasted for three seasons, airing on CBS and ABC within the years 1975 and 1979. When Wonder Woman was aired, it was nothing short of amazing. From the accurate depiction of the comic costume to the excellent performance of the lead character perfectly brought to life by Linda Carter and the catchy theme song used, it was a perfect and iconic expression and work of art. However, Linda faced a little backlash from her role as Wonder Woman. She felt she was being sexualized and didn't like the idea of that. In her words, she said, I never meant to be a sexual object for anyone but my husband. I never thought a picture of me would be tacked up in men's bathrooms. I hate men looking at me and thinking what they think, and I know what they think. They write and tell me. For Linda, the audacity was a little too much from the men who sent her a text. She wasn't that kind of person. Linda Carter, throughout her career, loved to live up to her setup standards. No one could take that from her. But as much as Carter thought she wasn't doing so much with her dress that looked like the main cause of what made men think what they think. In their heads, critics dissed Linda and said she was the cause of her problems. In one article on Wonder Woman, critics slammed the Wonder Woman legend saying, her role strongly adapted Wonder Woman's ideals, but suppressed and discredited American culture. After perspectives and evaluations had been thrown around about Wonder Woman's role, she took the stage to share her perspectives on showcasing the Diana Prince and Wonder Woman characters. Linda Carter mentioned that when she got the role back in 1975, it was a mix of blessings and, as one of her producers earlier warned, a curse. When he said this, Linda quickly made a move to correct his notion and made him understand he was short-sighted. To Linda, taking up the role of Wonder Woman won't make other women jealous of her. Here's how she said it in response to her producer's idea that other women would be jealous of her role as Wonder Woman. Not a chance. They won't be, because I am not playing her that way. I want women to be me or be my best friend. Linda sees the role she played as a source of inspiration and strength to every lady who watched her. Again, she says, There is something about the character where... In your creative mind, for that time in your life where you pretended to be her or whatever the situation was, that it felt like you could fly. Ten years after the Wonder Woman TV series was released, DC Comics added Linda Carter as one of the honorees in the company's 50th anniversary publication, 50 Who Made DC Great, for her stellar artistry and professional work on the Wonder Woman series. Even in the 21st century, the excellence of Wonder Woman continued to reverberate so much that DC Direct decided to release an exclusive 13-inch statue of Linda Carter as Wonder Woman. They made just 5,000 pieces and then made another set in 2010. In the same year, DC began to sell a 5.5-inch bust of Wonder Woman legend, Linda Carter, to celebrate 75 years of the DC Comics Foundation. No doubt Linda Carter made a statement and left an indelible mark with her role as Dane Prince in the Wonder Woman TV series. To serve as a testament to Linda's relevance in the movie industry, she was invited by director Patty Jenkins to appear in a cameo role in 2017. As much as Linda would want to make a feature in this, the dates weren't feasible. Now, at this, efforts to make her appear in a cameo proved abortive because she was now immersed in a new world after the Wonder Woman phase of her career. But can you detach Linda Carter from the Wonder Woman identity even as she explores a new path off what brought her into the limelight? Carter said many actors, they want to divorce themselves from a role because we are actors, we aren't the people that we play. But I knew very early on that this character is much more than me, certainly. And to try to divorce myself from the experiences that other people have of the character is silly. Until present, Linda's evolution and growth have not by one bit been detached from her identity as Wonder Woman. The career path after Wonder Woman, 
securing the role of Wonder Woman marked Linda's true breakthrough. However, it is also possible that achieving what one earnestly prayed for can also pose challenges. For Linda, this became her reality during and after portraying the Amazon princess. As much as the role made her, it also broke her. Even as he proceeded to move on from the three seasons of the TV series after the show ended in 1979 since 1975, she looked back on the many scars that she was left to tend to into the future. As Linda decided to launch into other acting and singing deals, the image of Wonder Woman that was ingrained in the public consciousness continued to shape her career trajectory and public perception. Although she desired the public and fans to move on past seeing as the Wonder Woman character, it wasn't an easy task. Despite that, she was still able to delve into great musical, promotion, and acting deals. While she acted as Wonder Woman, she was in demand for promotional deals in The Most Beautiful Woman in the World by the International Academy of Beauty and the British Press Organization. She had also signed a modeling contract with Maybelline Cosmetics in 1977. Even though Linda Carter yearned for the public and her fans to perceive her beyond the confines of the Wonder Woman character, transitioning away from such an iconic role proved to be a formidable challenge. However, amidst all that, she showcased her ability to delve into great musical, promotion, and acting deals. Her multifaceted talent secured her numerous lucrative opportunities in the realms of music, promotions, and acting. This made her successfully shut the mouths of critics who thought and believed she got the Wonder Woman role because of her beauty and her body. If Linda could get a penny for every time she kept emphasizing that she simply was the perfect person for the role, not her face or her body, she would be way richer right now. Despite dealing with people trying to downplay her talents, Linda Carter's work rate was unmatchable. She knew that she was a lady of many talents and ensured that she diversified her career portfolio by venturing into other entertainment avenues during and after the show ended. Linda was smart enough not to wait till the show ended before getting other roles and sources of income. She didn't bask in the glory of being Wonder Woman, nor did she rely on the fact that her beauty might open doors for her. She unashamedly knocked on doors of opportunities for herself. So, while she acted as Wonder Woman, she capitalized on her widespread recognition to embark on other means of success. Drawing upon her lifelong development of singing skills, she successfully launched her debut album, Portrait, in 1978, while the Wonder Woman series was still airing. The album gained a decent amount of attention and showcased her musical prowess to the world, which many did not know that she had honed since Chilled Hood. She collaborated with Maybelline Cosmetics in 1977 on a prestigious modeling contract. This partnership not only reinforced her status as a steel icon, but also demonstrated her versatility in seamlessly transitioning between Hollywood and the fashion industry. She was able to excellently draw customers' interest to Maybelline Cosmetics through her magazine ads, and in no time, she was promoted. Linda experienced her promotion a year after the Wonder Woman series ended. So in 1980, she was made the beauty and fashion director of Maybelline Cosmetics and acted not only as a spokesperson but also as a stunning model appearing in numerous printed ads and TV commercials. This contract ended in 1990. Linda had always been determined not to be a talent that rose to prominence quickly and breezily faded into obscurity. She was ready to establish a lasting career in the entertainment industry, and she gave it her all and was unstoppable. By the time Wonder Woman concluded in 1979, Linda Carter had expanded her presence to television commercials, notably starring in a major campaign for Diet 7-Up alongside Don Rickles. As the decade neared its end, Linda's celebrity status and portfolio continued to soar. Right from the 1980s down to the 2000s, Linda experienced exponential leaps in her career. 
she went from hosting a number of musical TV specials to landing prominent roles in a string of major movies like Rita Hayworth, The Love Goddess, Partners in Crime, Super Troopers, and The Creature of the Sunny Side Up Trailer Park. By the mid-2000s, 2005 to be precise, Linda Carter's acting career experienced another notable upsurge. She made a notable re-emergence with a memorable role in the big-screen adaptation of The Dukes of Hazard. Like that wasn't enough to process, that same year, Disney reached out to her, and she successfully jumped on the role of principal powers in Disney's action comedy Sky High, where she humorously referenced her iconic character by quipping, I'm not Wonder Woman, y'all know. In the following year, she showcased her versatility as an actor when she made a guest appearance in the Vampire Flick Slayer. She evidently passed across the message that she could take on any character and nail it perfectly. To her amazement, in 2007, DC Studio reached out to her. Impressed by her dedication and level of character interpretation, she was offered a role in the Smallville series. Accepting their offer, she continued her streak by returning to the DC Comics universe in the Smallville episode, Progeny. She embodied the role of Chloe Sullivan's kryptonite-empowered mother. This further solidified her status as a versatile and beloved actress, Linda Carter's life off the screen. While Linda Carter was a favorite face everyone enjoyed seeing on their screens, she had an entire life off screen that many weren't privy to then and aren't today. Beyond being cast on the big screen as Wonder Woman and a beautiful face on the commercial pages in magazines, she juggled the duties of marital life. And it wasn't an easy feat for her at first. She had to deal with hurt, pain, and heartache that no one knew about, yet she kept a jolly face for her fans and the public. Midway into the airing of the three-season Wonder Woman series, Linda got married to Hollywood producer and manager Ron Samuels in 1977. In retrospect, Linda had described her getting married to Ron as a stupid move she made. Ron was her talent manager, and she didn't think twice when he proposed to her. Their marriage was one that was riddled with distrust and betrayal. Aside from being Linda's husband, Ron was her manager, so he was in charge of handling every aspect of her career, which included making and approving her deals and managing her finances. Soon, her marriage began to experience some difficulties, and Linda started drinking. As her struggles with alcoholism persisted and marital discord loomed large, Linda Carter made the difficult decision to end her marriage with Ron Samuels, finalizing their divorce on February 1, 1983. The following year, she got married to her now late husband, Robert Altman. When she's not gracing the screen as a superhero or captivating audiences with her remarkable personality, Linda Carter finds solace and joy in her role as a devoted fan of the Washington Capitals ice hockey team. For over three decades, she's been a fixture in the stands, passionately cheering on her beloved team alongside her loved ones. Beyond the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, Linda's greatest pride and joy lie in her role as a loving wife and mother. Her marriage to Robert Altman was a testament to enduring love, blessed with two children, James and Jessica. Even amidst the demands of her career, Linda prioritized her family cherishing every moment spent with her children as they grew. Following in her mother's illustrious footsteps, Jessica Altman has pursued a career in acting, inspired by the guidance and support of her remarkable mother. In times of adversity, Linda's unwavering support for her husband shone brightly. During Robert's highly publicized legal battle, she stood steadfastly by his side, publicly declaring his innocence with unwavering confidence. Away from the spotlight, Linda dedicates herself to numerous humanitarian causes, advocating for LGBTQ rights, abortion rights, breast cancer awareness, and alcoholism recovery. Her passion for advocacy only grew stronger after her mother's Alzheimer's diagnosis, leading her to champion Alzheimer's research 
and Awareness Initiative. Tragically, the loss of her husband to myelofibrosis in 2021 fueled Linda's commitment to funding and advocating for blood cancer research. Through her philanthropic efforts, she strives to ensure that no family endures the pain of a rare cancer diagnosis alone. Linda Carter's legacy extends far beyond her iconic on-screen roles, leaving an indelible mark as a compassionate advocate and devoted humanitarian. She, indeed, is our Wonder Woman, the Wonder Woman outfit that kept falling off. While wardrobe malfunction and loops were often a common occurrence on set during filming in the early days of the 1970s, even down to date, such was not typically expected during the filming of the Wonder Woman series, let alone to the costume of the hero herself. The implication of a wardrobe failure was that a malfunction was going to potentially expose her already nearly bare body due to how revealing her suit was. Unfortunately, that happened. She had a particular outfit that kept falling down. During that episode, her Wonder Woman suit kept dropping from her bosom despite being fitted for her bust size. It wasn't so prominent, and anyone who was just fully immersed in the entertainment of the movie wouldn't have noticed. Until a particular scene that almost unclad Linda Carter on set. In that particular scene, Wonder Woman found herself in a face-off with a formidable opponent, a brainwashed gorilla named Gargantua. This memorable encounter occurred during Season 1, Episode 6 of the series, aptly titled Wonder Woman vs. Gargantua, which originally aired on December 18, 1976. In that scene, the Nazis brainwashed an oversized gorilla named Gargantua into hating, harming, and defeating Wonder Woman in order to retrieve one of their agents. When Wonder Woman finally had to have an encounter with the gorilla, she was trapped with him in a corner. With the gorilla already mentally controlled to harm her, he made a threatening move towards her. She slowly tried to dissuade him from harming her, assuring him that she didn't want to harm him. But the gorilla remained relentless, his aggression unabated as he continued to advance menacingly, disregarding her attempts to de-escalate the situation and peacefully resolve the conflict. He grabbed her from behind, and that was the moment that our Wonder Woman's corset failed her. As Gargantua suddenly grabbed her as scripted, his grip inadvertently tugged on her costume, causing one of her busts to become exposed, protruding from the dress. But Linda was quick to salvage the situation. She instinctively covered her bosom without making it obvious for an average viewer to notice that there was a wardrobe fault. Not only was she able to prevent her body from being exposed, but she also saved the production team and other cast from the stress of having a scene retake. Once again, she is indeed our Wonder Woman. Thanks for watching. To enjoy more thrilling stories that uncover the reality of your favorites, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen.